This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost and some exclusive deals over at btech.com. Hey guys, welcome to BTEC. Basil here with an HTC One. We've had this phone for almost a month now, despite having posted the review over at BTEC.com. The reason we've held off posting here is because we knew the obvious question you'd be asking is, which one should I get? Should I get the HTC One? Should I get the Samsung Galaxy S5 or the Sony Xperia Z2? Well, now we've had all three in the same room extensively, use the other two for at least a week. We are in the perfect position to tell you which one to get. So keep watching for our HTC One M8 review. The HTC One M8 design is really nothing short of breathtaking. Just look at that, that brushed aluminium backing and it's a blasted aluminium along the side so it's actually a different finish. You can see this is such a labour of love for HTC. At the top of the phone you can see you've also got an infrared panel which is plastic but it's all done with such precision it looks and feels seamless. If we take a look at the original HTC One some of our biggest gripes were the fact the plastic banding around the side just got a little bit dirty. No plastic banding on here now. Up at the top that power button was way way too small and too difficult to press now you've got a much much more easy to press power button it is still at the top but the fact you've got that double tap to wake the screen means you don't actually even need to use that power button in the first place the volume rocker as well it's gone from this very almost recessed so flushed it's just really difficult to press volume rocker right through to this gorgeous really protruding easy to navigate around with just your thumb volume rocker as well as far as key highlights go around the device itself, you've got front-facing speakers up top and bottom, and these are best in class. You've also got a wide-angle lens at the front. On the right-hand side is a micro SD card slot and a volume rocker. Moving down, you can see at the base of the device is that 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro USB port. Coming around, and you, can, you should really be able to make out how seamless and elegant the curves are on this thing. It's one piece of metal, it feels like it's just encased the body of the phone to perfection. On the left hand side you've got um, that nano sim slot and up at the top that infrared blaster panel as well as that volume uh, that power button sorry. Flipping it around and you've got the cameras the 4.1 megapixel ultra pixel camera warm and cool LED flash and that secondary camera for perspective information. So all in all, we really have to say design wise, this is without a doubt the most premium feeling phone on the market. And yes, we do mean including the iPhone 5S. We have an HTC One, a Samsung Galaxy S5 and a Sony Xperia Z2. Now the Sony Xperia Z2 is an IPS panel, Super AMOLED panel for the Samsung Galaxy S5 and it's SLCD3 panel on the HTC One. As far as what you can see right now goes off angle, the Samsung Galaxy S5 kind of nails it. It beats out the HTC One and the Sony Xperia Z2 comes last just because you can't see as much vibrancy or punch from that display even though all three are set to full brightness. If we pull it in closer to frame though all of that changes. Head on the Xperia Z2 is fantastic. It's worth saying viewing angles don't degrade in terms of integrity, the color integrity off angle. This is a much much better panel than its predecessor the Z1. It just doesn't have as strong angles as the other phones do. What you can see when we pull the HTC One into frame is the fact the Sony Xperia Z2 doesn't have quite as on point white balance, but the colors are much, much punchier. Both phones are pretty accurate in terms of colors, um, but the HTC One just kind of nails the whites a little bit more. The Sony Xperia Z2 would maybe look a little bit better for videos, etc., whereas the HTC One might look slightly better for web browsing. If we pull in the Samsung Galaxy S5, we can see that the yellow, the red, sorry, is much, much more accurate on the Sony Xperia Z2. Um, and all in all, both deliver a huge, huge amount of punch. Um, the AMOLED display delivers much, much deeper blacks, but you've got more differentiation across color tones on the Sony Xperia Z2. Any gripes we might have with white balance on the Sony Xperia Z2 by default, when compared to the HTC One though, are relatively meaningless, because if we jump into the settings, we can jump into the display settings, and we can see Sony has included a white balance control, which is fantastic. So you can really customize this to exactly how your eye 
works. Um, really, really strong, strong advantage that the Z2 has in terms of the display. Something we wish all of the displays adopted. So all in all, it really is gonna depend on what you want from your display. Um, but we would say for off angle viewing, the Samsung Galaxy S5 probably nails it. The HTC One default white balance uh, just delivers a much more subdued, slightly more realistic color palette gamut, sorry. Um, whereas the Sony Xperia Z2 is the most customizable, has the largest, most immersive display, probably make for the best screen experience in terms of movies and photos by default. It's Android 4.4.2 on the HTC One MA and you've got Blink Feed to the left hand side. Now, if you've seen our Galaxy S5 review, you'll notice we didn't really like my magazine UI. Look how much smoother Blink Feed loads and look how much smoother it is to navigate around. It's all a very, very seamless experience, unlike my magazine. So that's why we prefer Blink Feed. Also, if we do look in Blink Feed, you can see some Facebook notifications. That's because we've got Facebook highlighted. In fact, we generally just use it as a social media aggregator. You can add content on there from various um, sources, such as Guardian, for example, or other high or low brow sources out there. Um, but you can really make it your own, tailoring it for your needs. You've also got a notifications bar from the top at the top and a pull down bar with quick settings that you can toggle on or off. If we pinch out, you can see you have the option to toggle Blink Feed on or off, set whichever home screen you want to be your home screen and add or remove widgets. Jumping into the applications tray, and here we can see very, very clearly, um, uh, it's a horizontal, sorry, a vertically scrolling list as opposed to a horizontal scrolling list. You can change the number of icons that appear in your grid. So for example, we can set it to four by five to display everything on one page or indeed you can manage hide, unhide, or rearrange apps through the applications tray. All in all therefore, while it's a heavily skinned experience and it is HTC through and through, it feels so smooth and so seamless that it does actually almost feel more stock than indeed it is. If we swipe all our notifications out of the way, we can also very quickly jump into the settings. And here you can see HTC has made everything just look a whole load cleaner. So the experience across the board, super seamless, super smooth, super Super simple. Who wants to reach a power button at the top of the phone that you can't even reach with your thumb when you can double tap to wake the screen? We're really glad HTC's implemented this tech, but they've gone one step further. If you swipe from left to right, you'll actually unlock the phone straight into Blink Feed. If you swipe from right to left, you'll unlock it straight onto your home screen. And if you swipe up, you will just unlock your phone. There is also a feature to swipe right down in order to activate it into voice dial, which it just did. Um, but it really does depend on your internet connection as to whether or not that one works so well. Generally though, well, we really like the UI and we really like what HTC has innovated around gesture control that other manufacturers have pioneered. Speaking of gestures, you can see we've got the HTC dot view case right here. If we double tap the screen, for example, we can just activate a clock and the weather and it tells us what temperature it is and also any missed calls that we might have. Pull down on the screen and you can also activate a voice dialer as well, which we can jump out of. As for the actual protective qualities, you can see it protects everything on the front bar, the front facing camera. The sides are pretty exposed for the most part, but it does secure itself decently. It doesn't protect the camera lens, doesn't protect the flash or the camera so you can still use those with ease but having said that if the whole thing's open you can't use a camera because that's in the way and also it doesn't close flat so it's not super ergonomic it doesn't feel super super premium at least not as premium as having just the HTC One M8 with its gorgeous body on show still if you want that extra bit of security the back panel is pretty easy to clamp and it's comfortable to hold and swipe through like so the HTC One camera has been criticized heavily based on the fact it's packing a lower resolution 4.1 megapixel sensor. The F2 lens doesn't save it. And on top of that, critics have said pictures are duller than the competition in a lot of areas. So all in all, in pure automatic mode, this thing just isn't nailing it. But we'd say if you were prepared to tinker, you could actually get more out of the HTC One M8 than you could out of the competition. Here's why. We'll start off by telling you about the hardware and that F2 lens is paired with a 4.1 megapixel sensor, as we said. You've got a dual LED flash, one warm, one cool, to deliver outstanding brightness. Up top, you've also got a secondary camera and that delivers perspective information. If we're to open the camera UI, this is the main area this phone really does differentiate well. If you jump into the settings on the right hand side, you can choose your shooting modes, cameras, video, Zoe capture, selfie, dual capture, and panorama 360. 
jumping out of that, we can take a look into the shooting mode to show you exactly why this thing is so cool. Tap auto, you can see the additional shooting modes. Nighttime, HDR, panorama, anti-shake, manual, portrait, landscape, backlit, text and macro. If you tap through on manual, you can really set up the scene the way you want it and then some. So we've manually set our white balance in Kelvin right there. So we've got it set to about 6060 Kelvin for this scene. We've also got our ISO set to 400. We've got our shutter speed set to 1 over 400 and we have our focus set to nearest focal range of macro. So pulling that right up close in we can take a picture. Let's take another one so that we can get some background in there and we can immediately see we've set it so that we've got it really nice close macro getting close macro ensures we have some decent depth of field on there as well um, and so anyone who wants to have that kind of manual control can even take this as far as doing things like light trails which we've done extensively you can take shots at night just slow exposure and it even works handheld you also get a live preview of this on the screen of exactly what is going on so if we were to open up the shutter wide open for a two second lens you can see it's completely blown out whereas if we pull that up we can see give it a little bit of time to refresh and it goes back to normal all right jumping out of the manual shooting mode straight into automatic this is something else that HTC one does that no other camera phone can do let's take a picture of Petro right here so if we jump into the actual picture we can press the edit button if we jump into the foregrounder we can do something called foreground. So we sketch the background out. So that's cool. We can also use the same kind of logic to do a background blur, background defocus. It isn't perfect, but neither is that on the Sony Xperia Z2. And then we can refocus on certain elements after we actually take the picture. And that works incredibly, incredibly well. And again, it doesn't take long. And you can do it on all the pictures that you take in plain automatic mode. So it means that you don't have to think, oh, I need to background defocus this picture and so swap out shooting modes, which is really nice. You can also do a very cool 3D effect, again, in complete automatic mode. Edit. Um, um, 3D Dimension Plus. And you can get a weird tour around Pedro as you can see. This works well sometimes, it works less well other times and if we were to take another picture of Pedro as you can see you can get some really nice 3D effects on here. These can be activated either gyroscopically with a tilt which isn't always ideal when you're showing something off on camera or with a finger. So these really nice effects that you can just add on, you don't even have to think about when you're taking the picture and given the fact pictures are all so instantaneous or else you lose the moment, adds a really, really nice degree of retrospective creativity you can apply. So all in all, the HTC One camera, sure, the quality in pure automatic mode isn't gonna be the best out there, but if you want to tinker, you can get something out of this phone that you can't on any others. Other multimedia is shown off brilliantly on here. That screen is just perfect for showcasing videos, Netflix and applications like BBC iPlayer make it an absolute cinch to get movies and videos onto here. And with apps like MX Player downloadable through the Google Play Store and a micro SD card slot, you can get your own video files on with ease. If you up the volume, you're also gonna get ear shatteringly good levels of sound and you can also pair this thing with an HTC boom bass to give you some more boom to go with that treble. The stereo speakers are categorically the best on the market right about now so they're going to play back your music when you know you just want to play back one or two songs. Watch a YouTube clip to perfection. Also that front facing camera five megapixels. Oh yeah you heard us right. So that's going to take one detailed selfie. Um, generally media just doesn't get much better than this expandable up to 128 gigabytes as well. Gaming on the HTC One is pretty spectacular. If you're holding the phone like a joypad, you won't be covering any of the speakers. And in addition to that, whether it's a 2D game like Flappy Birds or a 3D game like Crazy Taxi, or indeed a fighting game like King of Fighters, this thing will perform with its Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 process and two gigabytes of RAM. That full HD display makes everything look glorious and gives you ample room for on-screen controls thanks to the five inches it offers.
Speaking of performance, between the powerful internals and the optimization HTC quite clearly lovingly applies to this phone. We had no slowdown, whether it was across the user interface in hardcore games. The only area that it did kind of stutter every now and then was the camera when we were processing images intensively. But that really was only a second here or there, nothing that detracted from the experience too much, meaning that performance generally isn't an issue on the HTC One. With every connection, you're going to want on here including that infrared blaster up at the top not to mention 3g 4g wi-fi wi-fi direct gps you're not going to get wireless charging you do have nfc on here though and again you're not going to get usb3 connectivity so it's not the best connected device out there but practically for the things that most people are going to use day to day it's got all your bases covered the 2600 milliamp battery on the HTC One M8 should last you through a day pretty comfortably, especially if you apply some of the power saving modes they offer. You've got regular power saver, which just limits background data, etc. But you've also got extreme power saver. If we toggle that on, you can see it deactivates pretty much every function of the phone, aside from these basic ones like phone, message, mail, calendar, calculator, etc. If we exit that, we can jump back to our regular phone environment and we can take a look at actual battery options. You've also got show battery level up at the top, sleep mode that turns off data during long periods of inactivity, as well as fast boot, which allows the phone to shut down and turn on very quickly. So all in all, the battery is good. Better than the HTC One, probably. As good as the Samsung Galaxy S5, nearly. As good as the Sony Xperia Z2, though, definitely not. So there you have it, the HTC One, a class leading phone in a couple of key areas, like the design, like the user interface, and like those front facing speakers as well. The camera could have been a little bit better in complete automatic mode. Also, we wouldn't have minded more resolution on there, but for the ability to tinker with our pictures, this thing comes up trumps across the board. Performance is also good with its quad core processor and the battery life sees you through a day. Although it can't stack up to the two days on the Sony Xperia Z2 and definitely isn't removable like that of the Samsung Galaxy S5. Hopefully this has helped you figure out which of the three flagships is right for you. If you've enjoyed this video click like below. If you like the channel in general click subscribe. Head over to btech.com over there you can find the latest in smartphones, tablets, smart gadgets and some awesome deals as well. At the top of the screen is where you can find three hand-picked videos for your viewing pleasure. On the left is where you can subscribe and on the right hand side you can find some exclusive deals if you head over to btext.com.